Okay, good morning everyone. Welcome to this webinar on modeling and detailing steel in Revit. So a little bit about me, my name's Rob Merriman. Uh, if you've not met me before, that's a lovely little picture of me there. Uh, so I've got, well it's now 12 years of experience in the construction industry. Um, after I finished university, I started as an architectural metalwork and steelwork draftsman. Uh, using advanced steel, so I've used advanced steel in industry for eight years. Um, and now I work for Grey Tech UK as an application engineer. Um, so I draw on that first hand industry experience and I provide uh, training, technical support, implementation, customization for structural steel packages, mainly advanced steel. Uh, but as those tools have been put in, to uh, things like Revit and uh, Advanced Steel has now been put in the collection, work with all different software in the collection to help you guys with your structural steel and your architectural steel work. Uh, so a little bit about uh, Greytech, we are a global company with over 550 staff, uh, 355 of those are technical, so we are technically driven. Uh, we're 30 years old with our headquarters in France, uh, we are a growing company and we are quickly becoming one of the largest Autodesk partners worldwide. Like I said, we've got 550 staff. We also have our own research and development center out in Romania with 100 staff out there. And we are here to help and work with you guys. Uh, we've done thousands of projects. We've got 98% uh, excellent or, or good on our technical support and we deliver over three and a half thousand training courses per year. So why Grey Tech um, and how we work and why you, you should choose to work with us, it, we've broken our company down into four areas. We've got Grey Tech Create, so that is using Autodesk products which we enhance with the Grey Tech Power Packs. We've got Grey Tech Simulate, so taking your design and looking at real world uh, analysis using our Grey Tech software. Then we have Grey Tech Fabricate, um, so we obviously take that design, take the analysis, then you've actually got to uh, fabricate it and manage the workshops and the sites. And then finally, we have Grey Tech Manage, uh, where we look at all three of the categories and we manage it with a, um, manage all of your documents, your work in progress data, um, working with an external common data environment. Um, so we are only, we are, probably the only company that can take your project through all four of these stages. So the Create, working with things like Revit, AutoCAD, Advanced Steel, today's webinar is gonna be uh, Revit focused. Then Grey Tech Simulate, we have our own advanced design package, advanced design connections. Fabricate is Armour Plus and Workshop, obviously Advanced Steel sits in uh, that category as well. And then we have Greytech OpenTree and Autodesk BIM 360 to manage all of your data. So before we get cracking, um, just to let everyone know that we now have content portals on our greytech.co.uk website. So if you have missed any of our previous webinars, you can now find them on our dedicated, there is a dedicated advanced deal portal. Um, in the handout section, of this webinar, I have given you a PDF um, of this presentation, and in that are all the embedded links. If you are more AEC focused, we do have an AEC content portal, or if you're MFG focused, we do have an MFG content portal. So if you go to our greytech.co.uk website, you'll find all of any previous webinar that we've done, all the recordings are now on our website. We also do plenty of blogs, different tips and tricks, different workflows. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to them, you can click the link and you will get the blog straight to your inbox. So we'll look at the upcoming webinars. Um, this after, or lunchtime, I'm doing uh, an advanced deal focused one. So I'm doing one on diagnosing and resolving numbering issues. Then this afternoon, I'm doing working with special parts. A couple of weeks time, Alec is doing best practices for drawings in advanced steel. And 
later that day he's also doing creating a custom model template if uh, you have missed anything or you're not sure where to find our upcoming events we have an events page on our website um, as you are all here for connections in Revit and modeling and detailing steelwork in Revit we have just announced that next Wednesday I'm going to be running a three-hour online workshop where I'm going to be looking at the steel in Revit tab but then I'm going to take the model into advanced steel so we're going to transfer the model into advanced steel then I'm going to use advanced steel to model staircases railings cat ladders folded plates and then I'm going to run all the automatic drawings and then finally I'm going to take that advanced steel model and sync it back in with the Revit model to update it so Everything that we've that I'm going to be doing next week, we've done in smaller webinar sessions. This is going to be a complete workflow from start to finish on a steel project. Um, so that can be found on our events page. So what we're going to have a look at today is we're going to look at steel connections, populating connections in the model, manually modeling elements. So we're going to look at plates, bolts, anchors, holes, shear studs, welds, cuts, contours, notches and mitres and then I'm going to roll all of those into custom connections. I'm not going to look at, uh, I'm personally not going to run through the Dynamo player, I'm not a Dynamo expert um, so um, Autodesk have produced some videos so, uh, from Powell so I'm going to just run through a couple of those videos for those of you that use Dynamo day in day out and then finally we'll look at dimensioning and labelling steelwork and what's been updated for those so before we start with um, the videos and what, what we're going to be showing you we're just going to look at the steel tab so Revit 2019 a new tab was added with tools for notching mitering shortening putting steel connections on so these tools now replace the normal cuts and mitres and copes uh, for steel elements one thing to bear in mind when you use these elements um, it does change your steel beam into what is called a steel fabrication format so things like the cutbacks as soon as you apply a connection the cutbacks don't uh, work anymore they get disabled can't put elements into groups so if you are looking at these workflows um, you've got my contact details please uh, just reach out to me and we can talk through uh, the different options with these steel elements we now can do custom connections which we're going to touch on today all of these tools have come from advanced steel so advanced steel is part of the collection so you can now create models uh, with a higher level of detail in Revit um, and then we can still use advanced steel for all the fabrication output and the complex modeling so you can see there the um, tool palette on the left hand side is the standard advanced steel tool palette on the right is the Revit ribbon so you can see where all of these options have come from so we're going to go into a video running through all of the things we talked about um, and then we'll move on to the dynamo player So we're going to look at uh, connections inside Revit and what we can do with them. From Revit 2017, 20 connections were added. Uh, Revit 2018, another 130 connections were added. These were all taken from Advanced Steel. Uh, so it's the Advanced Steel technology sat inside Revit. And then from Revit 2019 onwards, a new Steel tab was added, allowing us to uh, model stuff manually and create manual steel elements. So we're going to start with connections. So you can either do it through your structure tab, you've got the connection icon here, or in the steel tab. Now, what you need to do first of all is you actually need to load the connections into the project. So I'm just going to load in some generic question, uh, connections to begin with. So we'll start with the base plate connection. 
we'll look at general bracings as well. So we'll put in a couple of gusset connections. And we'll also load in a single sided end plate connection. So for now, I'm just loading three connections into my project. Now, um, at the moment, you might be modeling your connections using generic solids, um, just so you can see something in the 3D model. You might be just annotating a call out detail with some lines or using. Um, using some 2D families to show the generic base details, but we can now actually model all of those um, elements with connection. So we select the object, we choose connection, and then from our drop down, it will give us the available connections for that input. So we're going to put a base plate on. So that will put a base plate on for us. What it's done in here is it's modeled the plate, it's modeled the anchors and it's also modeled the welds in there for us. So it's done all of the work for us. Now, what we need to do before we do anything, we're just going to edit the type that's come in as a base plate type. We're just going to duplicate it to then go and modify the value. So I'm just going to call that BP01. And then we can go and modify the parameters. Now, with your parameters, you get a little dialog box so you can see what's going to update as you're making the changes to the model. So I'm just going to start by changing the plate thickness. Now, a lot of people will want to allow for pack and grout in there. So at the moment, the column is being shortened by whatever the plate thickness is. If, for example, we want to add 20 millimeters of pack and grout, we change this to value and then it would be the plate thickness plus our pack and grout value. So we want to shorten the column by 35 millimeters. Then we have our base plate dimension. So at the moment, all projections are equal. So from the center of the column, we're gonna project out 200 millimeters. So we'll have a 400 square uh, base. We can then apply different corners if we wanted to, to the base plate. Uh, now we're going to look at anchors. So there are lots of different anchor types uh, in here. We're going to stick to holding down bolts, but we're just going to change a couple of the values. So we're going to make them M16. 300 long is fine. If uh, you wanted oversized holes, so at the moment it's using a 16 mil anchor. It's putting a two millimeter tolerance value. So that would give us a diameter 18 hole can override that uh, maybe four to give us a 20 mil hole. If you wanted to, you can put washer plates in, that would create a separate plate. But for now, we're not going to, we're just going to change the anchor spacings. We can set the weld information later on uh, in this presentation when we put this into advanced steel we'll see that uh, that will come in automatically with an eight millimeter fillet weld all round. If you wanted to put uh, stiffeners in there, shear anchors in there, web stiffeners, flange stiffeners, you have all of the options to do that within this dialog box. We don't have time to go through every option because um, there are 400 variables inside this macro. Um, so we're just gonna cover the main points. Uh, if your steelwork is galvanized, you can create galvanizing holes. You can, you can change the diameter of them. You can have four holes, you can have two holes centered, you can have two holes diagonally, you can start cutting the web or putting holes in the web. We're, for this instance, not going to worry about that for now. So we've just updated and we've modified that type. That will then update. So you can see, if we go to a front view, you can see we've got our pack and grout value. That's one of the columns behind that doesn't have uh, the base plate on yet, but that's our 20 mil pack and grout value. So that's the basics of a connection for a single input element. Now we're going to put 
an element uh, connection between these two, this column and this beam. So I select the two items, choose connection. The system will then filter down the connections available based on your input. So you can put a single sided end plate on. That will put the connection in. We can then start to go through and again edit the type. We want to duplicate that type. We don't want to modify the standard single sided end plate. So we will call this three bolt. And again, we'll go and edit the parameters. So we'll just rattle through this. We'll just look at the plates. We're going to have a 10 mil plate. If you did want um, an erection tolerance in there, that's where you'd put this in. So if it was galvanized, you might want to bring that plate back a half a millimeter or a millimeter from the web of the column to allow for uh, the extra finishes. So what we're going to do here, we're just going to change the bolt centers. And what we're going to do is we're going to drop this plate down from the top of the beam six mil so we can get a weld across the top. Then we're going to set the bolts out. We're going to have from the top of the beam to the first bolt is going to be 40 millimeters. Then we're going to have 90 millimeters between the bolts. And then I want three bolts, uh, three rows of bolts. We'll look at the weld, six millimeter welds all round will be fine. So that's another connection sorted. All of these connections are macro and dialog box driven. So you just go in to modify the parameters and then you'll see that that connection will update itself. So the next one we're going to look at is a connection with three inputs. So if you're not sure which order to your inputs need to be, because they do need to be put in in a correct order, if you hover over your connection, you will get a little tooltip. If you wait a second longer, it will tell you what the selection order needs to be. So for this example, it needs to be the beam first, then one diagonal, then another diagonal. And it will tell you what profiles it will work on and give you a rough description. So we can choose. We'll choose the connection first, then it will ask for our inputs. That will put the connection on. You can see in here we have the inputs. You can change these around so you can swap number two and three around. If I swapped uh, one and two, it would then try and put the uh, connection on and it would try and make the beam one of the diagonals. So I'm not going to do that because it will probably break it. And again, we're just going to duplicate what's in there. We could even call this for this particular model connection dash two. And then we can start to go and modify the parameters. Again, what we'll do here, we'll just go to a front view so we can see what it's doing. The bolts will just have M16s throughout this job. And then we can change the bolt distances and you can see the picture. Now, those bolts are not on the center, so we've got the drop down here to put the bolts on the center line. And we've got bolt distances for the second second diagonal we can obviously have extra projections if we wanted to I'm actually pretty happy with what it's doing in here uh, the column we're just going to put an 8 mil fillet weld on that So that will just update that and that will put that connection on for us. So you can see with your inputs and the dialog box is very quick to get these connections on. Now what we're going to look at is 
uh, connections, bringing in connections from other projects. You might have standard connections that you use for your entire company. So what we're going to do, rather than recreate those connections on every project, we're going to open up the model. So I have a model here called Standard Connections. Could have been a project that we worked on previously. So we're going to open this up. This has, it's the same project, but I've got a few connections in here that I have already set up. I've just noticed something I need to go and change in this platform plate connection. So we'll just go in and we're just going to turn. It's got some stiffeners on, which I hadn't noticed before. So we're just going to look at these stiffeners and we'll just set them both to none because I don't need any stiffeners for this job. So you can open up any project and just transfer particular connections through, transfer all of the connections through. So we'll go back to our main model. And then we will transfer the project standards. And we'll check none. And then we're, we are just going to do the structural connection types. So we do have um, some types in here. We'll just do the new only ones. So we'll only bring in the new connections. And now if we go and look in our connections, we can see that we've loaded in more connections. Initially in this project, I only, I only loaded in a couple of connections. And you can see that we've got the different types in here. So I've got a single flat bar one I've already created. Uh, I've got a platform plate. So we'll just use a couple of those connections. So in here, if I look for shear plate, that's the standard shear plate connection, but I've already got 130 by 100 plate with a two bolt configuration. That's been loaded in from my previous project. So that puts it on straight away. Similarly for these platform connections. We've got a platform plate. We've got a 254 UB to a 152 UC. So that will put that connection on for me straight away. So those connections are loaded in from a different project. We can also load connections in with a Dynamo script. Uh, we're going to look at a different video for that uh, in a little bit. So that's generally how to apply connections and to work with the dialog boxes. Next, what we want to do is we want to populate this model with all of these connections. So if I go to the platform top of steel, you do need to be in level of detail fine. Uh, we'll probably go hidden line. I can see that connection. Now, I can simply just copy that connection like you would copy anything normally inside Revit. And that will then put that connection on for me. But that in this model will take a long time. I've got lots of connections uh, to apply to the model. So for Revit 2020, there is a new tool called Propagate Connection. So what you do is you select the connection you right click and in the drop down dialog you've got propagate connection. What this will do is it will search for everything in this entire view that has the same properties as our single sided end plate connection. And you can see that all of these uh, beams and columns have turned blue. That is that the connections have been processed in the background. So it's looking for a 152 UC with a 254 UB, a connection into the flange, and that will have propagated it to all locations around the model. So once we've got a couple of connections uh, set and we've got the types created, we can simply just propagate 
the connection and that will look through the everything that is in this view. Uh, so we're just going to look at how we can manipulate those things shortly. It will do it for the whole view. So sometimes you do have to be a little bit careful with what you're propagating. But that will, you can see very quickly, we've managed to get connections almost for the entire model. And the final one, what we'll do is we'll, we'll move on. Now, what I want to do, these columns here are sitting almost tight up against a wall. So I don't want the standard base plate propagated to those connections. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the columns that I want to propagate and I'm going to create a quick selection box because when I propagate this connection it will now only propagate it for what it sees on the screen so it will only propagate it for that selection box so we'll remove the selection box and you can see the connections at the rear have not got that uh, the columns at the rear sorry have not got that connection now i am going to i'm going to just copy this connection and then what we're going to do in here we're going to edit the type we're going to duplicate it we're going to call this bp01 because we need to offset this connection uh, sorry, we're going to call it BP02. And then we're going to modify the connection. And then what we're going to do is we're simply going to offset this. Let's just see which way it goes. So we need to go the other way. So we'll offset it 100 millimeters. Probably make it 110. That looks good. Just change it back to 105 so we can make sure we can get the weld around there. Now that offsets the plate. The anchors are controlled differently. So we can offset that. Because we offset the plate 105, we can offset this 105. And that will give me my offset plate. So we can see that there just clear of the wall. I might edit that a little bit later just to increase the offset. And then what we can do is we can propagate this connection and that will just look for the UCs that don't have a connection on. If, if they have a connection, it won't propagate. Uh, so you can see now all of our columns, we've got two different base types, connection types in there and we've used the propagate connection to populate our model with all the connections. So I'll finish uh, the rest of that off a little bit later. Now what we're going to look at is we're going to look at manually modeling elements within our model. So this is where the new steel tab that came in in Revit 2019 really comes into its own because we can now actually manually model uh, steel plates that advanced steel will recognize, bolts that have all come from advanced steel. We can create welds in there. We can do corner cuts on items. We can create contours in beams. So if we have service holes in the, in the web of beams, we can now do contour cuts. We can automatically notch a beam into another beam. We can do mitres, we can cut to the saw and the flange. So these are all tools uh, that didn't exist before 2019. So these replace um, your normal cope and mitre commands in Revit. These work for steel elements. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a custom, we're going to model some elements and we're going to create a custom connection in here. So what we're going to do, these two beams here need to be uh, anchored into the wall. Now I could use, I could actually use a base plate connection and that would just put a welded plate on the end. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a welded T, a fabricated T that is the steelwork then bolts to. So what we need to do first is we need to draw a couple of plates. 
Um, we're going to put a weld in, we're going to put some bolts in, put some anchors in. So I'm going to show you the tools for creating all of this manually. And then I'm going to roll all of that into a custom connection that we can use across multiple jobs. So for the plate command, what we need to do is we need to set and pick a plane. So I'm going to draw that plate on this wall. Then I can go to uh, my sections. If I have a section in here, so let's just have a look at the top of steel. No, so we'll... I was going to create a section, uh, but okay, what we'll do is we'll look at the west elevation. We'll just draw the plate in the west elevation. Uh, we'll go level of detail fine, and we'll go to a wire frame. We'll be able to see everything. So then we do just sketch out our plate. Uh, so we're going to make this plate 120 by 60. That should be fine. So excuse my drawing tools. I just find it easier. Uh, to get some lines in and then model from there. So we'll make that 120. And we'll make that 220. So if we go back to our 3D view, that's our sketch created on the wall. And then that has created it as a steel plate. So that's not just a, a a model in place or generic family that is a steel plate that advanced steel will recognize the next thing we need to do what we'll do we'll just create a little model view around these in fact we'll just go back to how it was we'll just isolate this element for now now what we need to do is we need to put some anchors into this plate to go into the wall so again we choose from the drop down we choose anchors we choose the object that uh, we are anchoring into and then we choose the face that we're creating the sketch on and then we can just sketch out sketch out the extents of our anchors now that will put the anchors right on the end and what we're going to do from the anchor drop down the same as that was available in the uh, base plate macro we've got all the different anchors that are available so we just put some m12 anchors in here and then we can control the edge distances now when you hover back into the model that will update what it's going to do So we might just want to change our edge distances on side 2, 25, just to update, just to pull them out a little bit. So that is our plate with our anchors into our wall. Now we need to draw a fin. Now I need to draw that plate onto the web of this beam. Now to pick the web of the beam, you actually need to be in level of detail medium to pick a to pick the web of the beam. And then before we start sketching, we'll just go back to level of detail fine. And then we'll just start drawing our plate. This could be any shape you want it to be. So we'll make it 120. We'll just check that, that looks fine. Then what we need to do is we need to weld these two items together. So to, to weld two items together, you simply choose the weld command, choose all the objects you want to weld together, and then choose the position where you want your welds to be placed. So that will put a weld symbol in there. And it's the same as is available in all the dialogues. We'll look at 
what type of weld we can put in there, the thickness, the location. So that's defaulted to site, so we're going to change that to shop. The last little bit then is to bolt the plate and the beam together. Choose the face that we want to draw the sketch in, and then we'll just draw our little pattern. Again, that will put the bolts on the outside, then we can change our bolt type. Change the grade, change the diameter. Uh, number on side two is going to be one. And then what we'll do on side one, we'll put our 40 mil edge distance. That should then update it. What we'll actually do, we'll put three bolts in there. So that will just update it to put that in there. And the final bit we need to do, we need to put a modifier on the end of this beam. So we need to shorten this beam by a set value. So if we put the shorten command on there, you can see the option in here. And we can make that 15 mil long. So that will shorten that beam 15 mil. So there is no connection in the vault that will do that for us. But we have now built our own connection out of the individual elements. Now, the final bit of uh, this little presentation is to take all of that and roll it into a custom connection. So to create a custom connection, we use the connection macro. And what we'll do is we'll start with, if we do a search, there is a search for generic connection. We can apply that generic connection to the end of this beam. And then we'll choose the customize option. So we'll call this 254UB to wall. And then it allows us to select what we want to add to this custom connection. So I can draw a window around and select all of these elements. And that will create a custom connection. So that all, we can now edit the type, we can break the connection, we can edit the connection. But because it's a custom connection, we can select this beam here, go to our connection tab, And now we can, we've got our 254UB to wall. So that is our custom connection that is available to use on that beam. And that will then apply those elements to that beam. So we can apply custom connections. We can transfer that to a different model. Uh, we can apply it within this model. So you guys can now build your own custom connections. Um, if you need to modify one of these connections, because it doesn't say we wanted some stiffeners in here, you can build a custom connection and start with this toe plate connection, and then you've got the customize option. So you can customize it to add an extra plate in there. So you don't have to build this connection from scratch. You can add to an existing connection uh, to then make a custom connection. So a couple of questions have popped up there. I will take uh, questions at the end. We've just got to cover Dynamo and the drawings. But um, Chris, uh, yes, you can add grout holes in the base plate connection macro. There is an option for grout holes. That will just do one hole. Um, but if you wanted two grout holes, you could just do what I've talked about there. And you could put a base plate connection on. Then you could use the hole. Um, element and put the two holes in or however many grout holes you want and then you could roll the base plate macro and those holes into uh, one custom connection but there is the option in the base plate macro to do that and Wayne um, can you propagate all connections at one time no you've got to propagate the connections one by one we are going to move on to dynamo in a second um, so there are some uh, Dynamo scripts available that will speed that process up. What I'm just going to do is, I was supposed to do it a little bit earlier, is I'm just going to launch a poll just to see how you guys are using, what you guys are using for your connections at the moment. So if you could uh, answer the poll for me, it's just to see, are you using these tools at the moment? Are your subcontractors 
doing the connections for you? Are you solid modeling in Revit? Or are you using detail lines? So I'll just leave the poll open for a little bit. 36% of you at the moment have voted. So I'll just keep the poll open for another minute or so. If you haven't voted, if you could vote, um, that would be useful just to just to see what people are doing. Okay, so we'll close the poll there. So it's about 50-50 between uh, not doing any connections and using detail lines and 2D family. So hopefully what I've shown you so far, you guys will find useful. So we'll just touch on uh, Dynamo. I am not a Dynamo expert. So like I said, I've used the videos provided by Autodesk from Pavel. Um, but you do now get a Autodesk Steel Connection Dynamo package. Um, it allows you to load connections from external files. So like I did with the transfer uh, project standards, you can load connections from in, uh, external files and there are predefined scripts to allow you to insert steel connections. So this script here, uh, this model here has got no connections loaded. This script, which is part of the Autodesk Steel Connection Package. So it has predefined scripts, allows you to load connections into the library. So you could build uh, a template, a connection template file, could load them in from a couple of different places, but that will load in all the different connection types. And then the next one is for actually applying connections. So this is to accelerate the insertion of steel connections. You don't have to place one connection and then propagate it. Uh, so Wayne, this might apply a little bit uh, to you at the moment, unless you, I suppose, unless you write your own script, it is, a, it is for just applying a base plate and then the apex haunch, but it will allow you to do the whole model you can then filter it down based on connections and your input beams. So you can control what uh, those connections, or how those connections are applied. So what it does, uh, the typical scripts start from the selection of your model elements, groups those into connection nodes, potential connection nodes, and then it filters it based on the criteria that you choose. So there are predefined scripts already there. It's the Autodesk Steel Connection Dynamo package. And then the last little bit is dimensioning and labeling. So the tagging and dimensioning has now been extended to allow you to create more accurate GA drawings and typical detailed drawings. You've got tags for well symbols that can be inserted in any view regarded, uh, regardless of visual style. Um, so I believe in some of the older versions, although you could now model um, these steel elements, the tagging and dimensioning wasn't quite there. So that has now been, uh, the existing tagging and dimension has been extended for these steel elements. 
So this would be for your typical GA drawings. If you did want fabrication details, that's where you would use your collection. You would transfer the model into Advanced Deal where it will run the automatic fabrication drawings for you automatically. Um, like I said at the beginning of the session, I am doing a three hour workshop on that, um, that whole workflow uh, next Wednesday, 9 a.m. to lunchtime. So that is the end of today's webinar. I will keep the webinar running for a couple of minutes if anyone does have any questions, but you have my email address there, my Twitter and my LinkedIn. So if you do have any questions on this, please reach out. So I just had a question there from Darko. So it depends what you want to do. Uh, your question was, uh, what is this super detail model used for? Um, it depends as a company what you want to do. We've had a lot recently of AC engineering companies who are having to, or who are used to um, modeling 2D lines for their connections but then the steel detailer is having to remodel it all. So you could put a couple of connections on, you don't have to put every connection on, but if you use the connections, it means you don't have to draw 2D lines. It also means that if you've got a connection package like Idea Statica or Advanced Design Connection, these connections will go straight into those um, analysis packages and you don't have to remodel it so the whole idea of these workflows in the ac collection is to reduce the siloed workflow where you as the revit users model it all once then you give pdf drawings to me the steel detailer i start from scratch i have to remodel everything even if you put one base plate on there it just means i don't have to remodel it i can then copy it around the model so it's reducing uh time for everyone in the whole process a um, couple of people asked about if you can have a copy this uh webinar is being recorded it's going to be put on our advanced deal content portal it'll probably take the guys uh probably till the middle of next week to get um to get it all processed and get it uploaded but if you look on the advanced deal content portal all of our previous webinars will go up there Uh, is it possible to add more bolts into the anchors bolts? Yes, you can add more bolts into the system. All of the things that you see here, the, the anchors, the bolts are taken from Advanced Steel. So Advanced Steel has the options to add more bolts and anchors into the system. You would need to do it in Advanced Steel and then copy the database into the Revit database location. Um, Autodesk have done a very good one hour video on adding extra bolts and anchors into Advanced Steel. Uh, if you look on the Revit structure forum, I've answered a couple of questions how to do this and how to get the databases across. Um, so that's how you would add more bolts. There are connections for cold form profiles. You can do it manually. There are lots of connections in there already for bolting them. The only thing is that your cold roll profile has got to be set up correctly to make sure that um, Revit, the connections recognize that element. Um, so it can be done. Uh, shear studs can be placed onto the back of plates. Yeah, um, rebar. Rebar is more of a concrete element, so if you were going to do that, I would probably just, you probably have to create an actual rebar as a structural framing element, then you would be able to weld it on there, Chris. Um, but shear studs, yes. Uh, rebar, you probably have to create, like I said, structural framing family, um, then you would be able to weld it to the back of a plate.
can't see any more questions popping up. Um, like I said, you do have my contact details in the handout. So thank you very much for attending this webinar. Hopefully you found it useful. Um, and if you do have any questions or want more information on this or a training course, we do have a training, a one day training course for this and all other different areas um, of steelwork, please reach out and then we can help you from there. So thank you very much for joining today.